The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line.
The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome everybody. It's Friday afternoon. It's one o'clock here. No, it's two o'clock. I can't even keep up with it. It's two o'clock on the East Coast. Uh, this is Brian Anderson. I have a special guest today. Uh, his name is Jay Fairbrother and uh, Jay's agreed to help on a few mobile calls as we get Mobile BizBox, um, some webinars out and some training. So he's, he's here to help facilitate and participate on the call and meet, meet some of you and share ideas and strategies. Let me let you guys know that we're not, there's no offer, no course. This is truly just a, a training and we're going to talk about positioning. So don't feel like you have to uh, hang up three quarters of the way through because you don't want to hear what anybody's talking about. It's, it's, it's nothing like that. Uh, there was a few questions. This is truly a training. We want to talk about Mobile BizBox, talk about um, where you are, um, and then really just high level positioning. We're going to delve into different areas uh, much deeper. We're going to talk about pricing in detail on another call and sales strategies, but this is to help kind of fence in and maybe hit on some high level hot buttons that seem to be coming up a lot. And uh, Jay, do I have you on the call? Absolutely. Thanks, Brian. Glad yeah, to absolutely. And you guys, for those that don't know Jay, he is in uh, the Pittsburgh area. He runs a mobile coaching program called the, the Local Coach, right, Jay? Right. And um, excellent guy. If you haven't met him, um, it's worth checking his stuff out. He's got great material. And more than just a super guy. I think you'll you'll figure that out by the end of the call. So uh, we got about 45 people, looks like, on the call, which isn't bad for middle of the day on a Friday. We will uh, we'll actually get started now. We'll try to use your time wisely and be done in under an hour. So uh, nobody hold me to that though. But but that's the goal. So Leanne, if you're ready, let me know, and we'll uh, we'll do it. Okay, excellent. So it looks like we're good to go. Jay, I'm just going to start and I'll yep. move it to the next slide, you guys, I think. Really what we're going to talk about is understanding what's in Mobile BizBox. It's a whole lot of stuff. Um, hopefully you think it's all useful, but let's talk about that. And then we're going to do some, some simple polls just to kind of understand where you're at, where you're struggling, where you're doing well. And then high level positioning around the different areas in Mobile BizBox. This isn't going to be a call where we take 47 questions on pricing. 
Um, those are actually both my and Jay, some of our favorite calls, but it's just not today. We will take some, but we don't, we don't want to just spend all the time on pricing. So if you think, you know, you ask that, we'll write you back and let you know we'll have to table it for another call. But uh, we want to get into like more positioning on uh, when to use what, how to explain it, things like that. So uh, let's see you guys. First and foremost, um, thank, every, thank everybody on this call for being a customer of uh, what we've named Mobile BizBox. We still argue, Mario and I, over whether there should be spaces or not between the words. I like it with no spaces, and other people think there should be spaces, so I'll have to, have to figure that out later. Um, welcome, uh, yeah, it looks like we've got four continents. Uh, Germany, uh, Galahad, and uh, South America, I see, US, this is excellent. Um, you guys, just to reiterate, what we're working with is what we think a complete local, oh, I can't even talk, local and mobile together. There you go. Complete mobile marketing solution for local businesses. It's aimed to be used by a consultant, somebody like yourself or myself. And the whole idea is to give you all the necessary pieces that it takes to win in uh, selling mobile locally. Because you can't win with only SMS. You can't win with just an app. And um, for sure, if all you had was a mobile website, you'd be missing out on a lot of revenue. So the whole idea is to give you all the pieces of the pie so that you always have what we consider the best tools out there to deliver services for clients. So you know this stuff, but I just want to reiterate it. Um, we have what we think is a world-class iPhone, iPad, and Android app builder. It's um, super slick. You don't need an outsourcer. Um, I will tell you that I find it useful to have a graphics guy to help me on certain things, only because I'm so poor in graphics. Uh, you don't need one, but to me, it, it adds a lot of value. Uh, what else? We've got what's called a, what we call enterprise class or a professional class SMS platform. And uh, just in the interest of all honesty, we've uh, done a lot of work in the past year on the SMS system. We are in talks with a, another platform cutting a deal, uh, a really sweet deal, that'll add a lot of features, functionality, ease of use, and we may, uh, we may end up making an announcement about that. You would pay nothing more, you would just gain access to this other platform. And uh, your rate per text message would actually go down from our already ridiculous prices. So uh, just to tell you about that, all of you have access to our QR code tool. That piece of software is unbelievable. I'm not going to get into it on today's call. It deserves its own call to really delve into. And I think Jason and I will hit it one, one day on a call. And then you've seen it, and many of you have used the premium mobile site platform. The beauty of this thing is it really is that easy to do. Uh, one of my team, uh, Tracy, built a mobile website for one of my franchise clients. I gave her, like, Peter and I hit her back with, like, three or four suggestions. Within one day, we basically came up with a site that we're going to sell for 2500 to them back and forth, and it's super easy to use. Um, and I, I, the general takeaway of what we were trying to do is make everything super easy to use, hosted. Um, there are other solutions that are, that are great, and they're very technical, and they may even be better priced, because if you can do all this stuff and install all the server and do a little manual code here and some stuff there, man, it does work out cheaper. We just said, hey, it's all about delivering the absolute best product without having to bring in three outsourcers and expand your team. We wanted to, we wanted to control all the moving pieces as best we could. So I think you know this stuff. I just wanted to hit it again. If there's questions about it, go ahead and throw them in and we'll, we'll answer those. Um, next, real fast, we have a training site. I think most people have registered, but not everybody. I know there's about 15 people that haven't. If you're one of those people and you're on the call, that's the site. But to register, you need to go to mobilebizbox.com forward slash register. That easy. And Leanne, if you see anything wrong, if I mistyped anything, you know, correct me, of course. Um, and support. We always get support questions, and these are, um, this will be no different. This is the support site. If you have anything about billing, or how do I do this, or I need help with this, or I'm not sure if this makes sense, anything you can dream up. Rather than Skyping them, please, please don't email and don't Skype. This will log them, and then multiple people can grab them and answer, or typically you get answered super fast. And, and I do try to answer people on Skype, but I promise this is your best avenue for support. 
So, all right, enough of that. Are you making money with mobile? We thought we'd ask a few questions. So we, uh, we have some poll questions here. I figure out where they're at. And you guys will all get to see them. All right. Here's your first one. There's just a couple of these, you guys. Jay, do you see it by chance? I, I can't see it on my screen because I'm... Yeah, I've got it. it. looks good. Okay, good. So you guys, um, actually a bunch more people have jumped on. If you guys don't mind answering a few of these polls, this will help us in crafting not only this discussion, but future calls. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's coming. We're... Um, I see the results coming in, and it's heavily weighted towards sales techniques. Yep, sales right now is by far, yeah, I see the stats coming the in, thing too. Up, oh, look at it, balance, here, Brad. balance it out. <laughs> yeah, right, pricing is pricing. seconds, guys. Yeah, Everybody pricing sales voted. technique. Vote, vote. <laughs> hey, we see that you didn't vote, and we're going to call your names out in a second. <laughs> No, I'm teasing. All right, what do you think, Jay? That's good enough. That gives us, I think, a, a pretty good idea. Let me uh, let me close this poll, you guys, and I'll show the results. Just yeah, Jay, you guys yeah. can all see him. Okay, good. So you guys will see Jay is dead on. Look at that sales techniques. We figured that would be number one. Forty-two percent. Positioning and services are about the same, and then pricing is always a big one. You can roll it into sales even and say sales is three three quarters, but we like to keep pricing separate because there's usually so many questions about it, and it's it's honestly a fun topic because it's all about how much money we're going to make. So I, it's one of my favorite ones to, to cover because it's all about the money. So that's a great one. Thank you, guys. Um, that helps us a lot, not only on this call but on additional calls. So... We're gonna hit a few of these because we really need to help understand what are we uh, what are we working with. Here's another one. Um, your primary of interest, and I just picked products in the mobile biz box family. I bet there's other products you're interested in, but go ahead and vote on this. Um, Jay, I got my bet. They're all gonna be website and app. How much you wanna bet? Let's see. No, you're gonna get some SMS in here. Yeah, SMS is coming back. Look at that. <laughs> Feel like we're watching a sporting event here. <laughs> yeah, excellent. All right, half of you have voted. Let's get the other half in. We'll give you 10, 15 more seconds. Look at that. All right, I bet that's that's telling. We'll give you a couple more people. We'll hit the three-quarter mark and we'll call it. All right, the same group, the same exact people voted. All right, I see a trend here. Let's see. Yeah, I'm a little surprised by these results. Not that we're getting a lot of SMS. Well, wait till you show them. All right, let me show them. Jay, why don't you comment on this one? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I'm surprised too. I'm surprised mobile websites is so low. Um, and and we'll, we can talk about this, you know, talking about positioning and stuff because um, mobile websites in some senses and in some verticals can be an easier sell than SMS. Um, so it, th th this is interesting, but it's good to know. No, and I agree, I agree Jay. Mobile websites is almost always, to me, easier and the fact that apps is basically, you know, it's tied with SMS, it's right at the top, that reflects the fact that it has so much sizzle, sex appeal, if you will. Um, it, it's very interesting. So um, we'll, we'll do a couple more of these. And th these go out to Patty. If Patty from Chicago is on the call, I haven't looked yet. Patty said, Brian, you got to do more polls. And so uh, I said I will. So, and actually this one looks... This one may be a little redundant. Um, this is for the lead product, the one you want to get in the door with. What do you see as your lead product? Yeah, look at that. I wonder if that stays consistent. Um, I would probably agree with these guys on this one. <laughs> oh, there we go. We're halfway there. All right, so um, we'll let the rest of the same guys vote. What do you think about this, Jay? Let me uh, close it and let you comment on that. We've already kind of got the answer, I think, here. Yeah, well, I, I maybe this goes to what I was just saying is that you know mobile websites can make a great great lead product, um, and we'll talk you know hopefully today some more about the positioning because I actually think the SMS number here is lower than it probably should be, and I can clarify what I mean by that later. Okay, super. And you guys, well, I just, didn't see the results. Did you close it? 
Uh, yeah, let me see. Do you? Oh, I didn't hit share. Let me share it out. I there apologize, everybody. What about now? Yeah. Yep, so this is, um, back to Jay's point, you guys see the heavy bias towards mobile sites. I kind of agree, but I'm with him that SMS has a lot of value because it, it brings immediate ROI. So we're going to do two last questions about your own personal business, and then we're off and running, and now we know how to frame all the discussion today. So hide results, and there's two questions. First one is, how big is your operation? Um, I think all of us are fairly small. I don't think very many people in our group are over 10 people. Most of us are are one to three, if I had to predict. And I don't mean extended outsourcers, like if you worked with SEO dominators and they had 45 people, they don't count here. <laughs> so, um, okay. I think you guys will be interested to see this one. This was, a, I, I wasn't sure. I knew it'd be a lot of one, but I wasn't sure how it would split working out of home or out of the office. So. I'll show you. Oh, we got somebody voted. A new person voted. Excellent. All right. So this one, guys, is interesting. Look at that, Jay. So basically, 38% work, you know, are, are single guys from home, and single guys and gals in a small office was uh, 48%. Um, I, I like that statistic because what here's what that tells me. You know, I'm kind of new to working with you guys and, and some of your folks, but what it tells me is, is that what I suspected is, is that you guys are kind of a step ahead of the general uh, public, so to speak, out there selling mobile, meaning you've got a, a larger percentage of people who, you know, are really serious about this and are really, you know, serious local marketers. And I don't mean that you're not a serious local marketer if you're just from the kitchen table. I'm just saying that it doesn't surprise me that in this group, you know, especially the people who've done the mobile biz box thing, you know, you, your goal, at least you, you're, you're here to set up a serious mobile business. You're not playing around. So that's what this says to me. Nope. I agree. And the last one, you guys, and we're off and running. The last question is, and this is back to number of clients, how many, not, not SEO clients, not social media, but strictly mobile. What do you have today? How many clients do you have? Cool, cool, it's coming in. Thanks everybody's vote. And I, I know some of you guys may say, hey, stop with the polls, but I promise knowing this kind of information, um, it really does help. It helps frame the discussion. It helps pick in questions to answer. This is what, kind of what we thought. I'll stop it now and we'll move on. You can see the results. So Jay, that's interesting. Uh, two out of five have zero mobile clients, but they're obviously fired up about mobile. Um, one out of five uh, people have one client and in a nice group with two to five. So I think it's a good group. Nobody with obscene amounts of clients, like on the SEO side, nobody over 20. You got a few of you, um, looks like four people in total have more than five clients on the call, mo mobile focused clients. So, okay. Yeah. Can I actually, this is a, yep. a good, um, okay a place to for me to sort of talk about a little bit about my background um this slide demonstrates exactly why i started the local coach um because i first of all i've been an entrepreneur for 20 some years and i've always been in sales and marketing um i've owned a couple of restaurants where i used mobile marketing but i've also been the president of, of one sms company and the vice president of sales for another and in that process, I started working with people, you know, exactly like everyone on this call who are white labelers and, and resellers and local marketers. And over and over again, I saw that people could get to three or four clients and then they'd almost hit like a hump where it became very difficult for them to take it to the next level. And so that's basically why I started uh, my coaching program is to do exactly that is to take people who want to be serious about this stuff and not just mess around buying WSOs, but who really want to build a real business. And I created a coaching program and I'm not here to pitch the coaching program. I apologize if that's the way this comes across, but it's, it was literally this, you know, to be able to build a real mobile business beyond your first few clients. So this, this slide's not surprising to me at all. Okay. So we're going to hide the poll and move on. So, Really what we were gonna do, too much talk about mobile being hot, we already know that. There's no stats on any of these slides. We will not have any statistics. And uh, let's just move on. We'll talk about what to sell, how to sell it, and how much money you can make.
So uh, I'm gonna move to the meat. So there's lots of ways to monetize, right? You get it. You can lead with mobile websites like a lot of you obviously do, three out of four of you do. You can pair it up with SMS, you know, really start to bring the ROI. Um, you can obviously use the sizzle and sex appeal of apps. You gotta, you gotta find the way that works for you and for the segment you're targeting to truly find the right path to, you know, to start making uh, new clients. So many people get hung up in how do I get a client? How do I do this? But you gotta ask some fundamental questions. What kind of clients do you want? What are you targeting? I had a great conversation, Jay, last night with a guy from, uh, I want to say he was in Port, yeah, Portland, Oregon. He was a, he's new to mobile biz box and he was, uh, he's targeting the realtor market, real estate market. And we talked about the need to keep the price in line because they don't have budget. You know, you're going to be, you're going to have to go after volume. You're going to have to focus on, uh, on volume and getting the brokerages that aren't tied into the national chains, the ones that need help to kind of stay up to speed. So what do you think? I mean, is there any one way that you always talk to your students when you talk about ways to monetize? Do you, uh, do you say, Hey, I recommend you lead with this. How, how would you advise the group here? Well, that's a big question. Yeah. Um, I know it's a little, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A, yeah. Well, I, you know, first of all, I think, one of the, you know, what the whole point of talking about positioning today, and especially relevant to you guys coming up with this great mobile biz box thing is, you know, even looking at this slide, I'm confused and imagine what your prospect is going to think if you walk in and say, yeah, I can do mobile websites and SMS, or I can do mobile apps, or I can do QR codes with SMS, or I can. Do... So part of this, the, the key strategy that everybody has to figure out for themselves is how do you want to position yourself? What do you want to lead with? And there's no one right answer. You know, as, the, as that poll suggested, in some ways, mobile sites can be an easier lead. And, and, and what people find there is that because it's, it's the business owner gets it more quickly. You know, you can do the before, after. If they don't have one, you can talk about, you, you can identify a pain point immediately in the fear of them losing customers. So they, you know, can immediately latch onto that and, and see, okay, I need one of those, you know, then it's just a matter of showing value and, and, and showing them what you can do and that kind of thing. Um, so there is no one answer to your question. And one of the things that, that I always try to encourage my folks to do is to actually come up with a couple variations. So in other words, if you have like a brochure, you know, maybe you have a brochure that talks just about mobile websites and maybe you have one that talks just about SMS. And when you get to a business owner and we will come, we can come back and talk about prospecting and stuff. But when you get to business owner, you know, you have to figure out what is going to hit the, the most benefit to that business owner. You know, what's going to give them the most bang for the buck? Is it a mobile website? Is it SMS? Is it an app? And, and through, you know, qualifying and, and asking questions of business owner, you have to try to get there. So why don't we start, uh, Jay, why don't we start with mobile websites? Um, in terms of positioning them, um, I, I see almost any business, you know, is a potential prospect for a mobile website, whereas maybe an app, it, it isn't as quite universal. What do you think in terms of uh, the landscape, you know, is, is everybody truly a client, a potential client for a mobile website sale? I, I, absolutely concur that every business is a, is a prospect. I think then it's a matter of, you know, narrowing into and focusing on verticals where there it's even more important. And some of the ways, you know, I mean, some of the obvious ones have to do with mobility. Um, you know, when are people looking for those type of businesses? Um, the competitiveness of the business, because again, one of the things about, you know, you have a mobile website, you don't have a mobile website or a business that's afraid they're going to lose customers to competitors because they're in a very competitive industry. You know, they want to, they want that mobile website. They don't want to lose customers to anybody else. And, and then obviously from the search. So, you know, obvious things like, you know, locksmiths, towing companies, you know, taxis, um, things like that, you know, are, are more, you know, are better targets for a mobile website than, you know, all the many other types of businesses. And again, every business is a prospect, but you want to focus on ones that, that really take, you know, benefit 
from having uh, the mobility factor. No, that's a great point. I mean, and Jay just rattled out three businesses that we hardly ever talk about. You know, I always stay away from locksmiths just because of the challenges with Google Places and they've been banned as an industry. But you're right. Anybody that you would need to find when you're in a crunch and you're on the phone, those are easy ones to kind of target first for sure. And uh, obviously the low-hanging fruit, you know, we all know is restaurants, but he just went well beyond that and gave three pretty good ideas, I think. Well, and even within restaurants, you know, for mobile sites, focus on ones that are, you know, that do a ton of business with takeout and delivery. Um, you know, obviously pizza, you know, th those kind of restaurants are even more important to have a mobile site. Yeah, well, well said. And I'll tell you that um, we've been, you know, our, our own group's been selling mobile sites and mobile SMS longer than we've been doing apps. And we've seen the price point for the site, you have to be very fluid. So if you are in Connecticut and you're in, you know, or Westchester County, New York, or you're in Beverly Hills, you know, if you're in ritzy or high dollar areas, you're going to be able to command a higher price point on a mobile site than you are in other markets. Or if you're selling to like, like I just went to a uh, burger place for lunch today, you know, my ticket was $8, right? Small, you know, inexpensive place, no, no waitress. It's kind of like self-service at the counter and you go sit down. Casual dining, I guess you would call it. I'm probably going to only get five to seven fifty on a website for those guys. Whereas I was in South Beach a few weeks ago with my partner, and we went out to these one of these hot and trendy restaurants. They'd laugh me out of the building if I tried to pitch something super cheap because the perceived value isn't there. If if you don't come in higher, you know, to a client that's expecting to pay more, they're thinking you have a toy or a gimmicky solution, and they want a real solution that's really going to help them stand out. So, like, if we we're, we have two restaurants that we're trying to pitch in South Beach, both of them are right around two thousand dollars for the mobile uh, mobile website only. It's just it's a different. It's you have to know your customer, I guess. Is that fair to say, Jay? Well, and not uh, yes, absolutely. I agree with everything you've said, and I would even add that it also depends on the value. Um, you know, so uh, the example, you know, I, I like to pick on attorneys because I don't like them. Um, <laughs> I, you know, Me either. I, I don't want to sell, you know, something for the same price to a tanning salon that I do. You know, I want to charge an attorney a lot more because it has a lot more value to them, and they can afford it, and I don't like them. So, you know, it's a win-win-win. <laughs> So for the same site, I would charge an attorney a lot more if he's, you know, a, a personal injury attorney or divorce attorney or DUI attorney. Those are very competitive. Um, the bankruptcy attorneys, uh, I, I would charge them a lot more than, you know, the, the burger joint you were at. Okay, excellent. All right, so well, can I um, add yeah, something yeah. here? Because I see absolutely, a I want you to jump in. And if you see them, I don't see the questions right now. So if you see something yeah. good, please bring it up. Well, there, there's, I wanted to address your recurring fee here, and there's a question regarding it, or at least one question. So um, one suggestion that I have is if, if for mobile sites, instead of positioning it as a software maintenance or hosting fee, build in changes and updates and charge monthly for changes and updates rather than software or hosting. So you build in, you know, price points that say, you know, for an extra thirty dollars a month, you get two changes. For, you know, fifty dollars a month, you get six changes. For a hundred dollars a month, you get fifteen changes. With, you know, some kind of tiers like that, because that's eas more easily understood, and you don't even get into that whole, you know, what if I host it myself kind of discussion. Um, and you can actually make a really nice margin on those changes you know, based on, on the tiers, because people always, well, generally think they're going to make more changes than they actually do. No, that's a great point. I've never, I never really thought about it. And I will admit that historically, I've always stayed away from website design. I leave it to guys, I don't know if Jeff Klein's on the call, but I leave it to guys like Jeff and real website design guys. But the nice thing, you guys, with what we put together is any one of you can build a, you know, a quality class act mobile site without being a guru, a design guy, and you can make those changes in minutes and make that ROI on the change fee really, really is there. I stay away from hosting. I like using software maintenance or license fee just because it's hosting has a real low perceived value, whereas a software maintenance fee 
for that update fee, both of those have a higher, people have, would have a higher value to each of those. And that's what you need to do so that you don't get into a price battle. And, you know, it's a, probably a good time to bring up, we haven't told all of you guys, but uh, we're actually lowering the price of the mobile website. So initially out of the gate, they're going to drop, we told a lot of you $25. Um, or we actually told everybody to let me cl clarify $25 on additional sites. The additional sites have uh, been reduced to 20 and we're going to tier them down based upon volume to uh, initially 15 and then eventually as low as like $6. So we'll, we'll release all of that. So there was a bunch of good questions. There's a guy, Ken, um, and I remember which Ken, it wasn't Santucci, but it brought up a good point. And, um, you know, we do have some hard cost, but I promise you, and you guys know Mario and I pretty well, we're not out to try to make a big spread on the margin of everybody's mobile sites. We're really just trying to cover operations. If you, if you know how we price the SMS, you know we actually don't mark it up at all. We charge like a platform fee and everything's passed through. So you will see that in general with us, we will push the cost down with volume rather than try to just take, take, take from people. It's just a decision we made based on our business model and what we're doing. So expect to see other things. Um, I'll talk about it on the app side, but we're gonna have a tiered model on the app side that drops down potentially in time as low as $10 an app. So we'll get into it all later, but we wanted to share that with you because I know it's always a hot button. It is for me too, so I get it. But uh, what else, Jay, anything else on the mobile sites? Um, no, but just a question here prompted to something else. That when, when I was talking about the building in those change fees, you know, here's an, another example where you have to kind of be careful. If, if you've only got one price sheet, you can get yourself in trouble. So if I go into a restaurant that's you know sort of a, a more upscale restaurant, even if it's small, and, and they change their menu daily, then you got to be careful because if you're selling a change fee package like that, you could be into 30 changes a month and just recognize that as opposed to the majority of restaurants where they change their menu, you know, maybe once a month or once a quarter. And when you build in those kind of levels like that, just keep that in mind, who you're selling to. No, that total sense. I'm with you. Um, all right. Let's go on, you guys. We're... This is going to be kind of an intro call. We're going to have a lot of webinars. I have three scheduled for next week between uh, mobile and, and search calls. So there's going to be a flurry of webinars. We want to dish out a lot of valuable training and resources. Um, and on that same note, before I forget, continue to go to the training site. Leanne and team are pumping out materials, helpful stuff, knowledge-based articles on the support site. Uh, go there regularly, and there will be, probably be updates uh, Often, I think you'll find it very useful. So beyond websites, yeah, I put one up. This is actually one of mine, um, and 750 bucks. <laughs> That's basically all I could get. Somebody said, "Hey, Jay," they said, "Oh, I didn't hit share, did I?" Um, there you go. Somebody said, "Brian, what would you, what do you charge for this?" And I'm like, "Well, I make up the price every time." I know a lot of people are fond of packages, but the real world does not always fit in two buckets or three buckets. I, I, I learned that the hard way. So I, I usually come in there with a number in my head based upon what I think the business can pay. Let me give you an example. And a lot of you have heard this before, but if you haven't, when I sold uh, software, I used to sell enterprise software. And we would sell, let's, let's say, the same package. If I sold Wells Fargo Bank, this is a real deal. We sold them $2.6 million, roughly, for, for the software package. We then sold a very small company in the Midwest that had a similar kind of uh, computer. It was a smaller mainframe. We sold them the exact same software based upon ability to pay and usage and so forth. We fenced it out for $40,000 because I knew that if I wanted that customer and wanted that sale, they, two million, it wasn't ever gonna happen. You know, Wells Fargo is an anomaly. It's a monster company. So uh, you have to do the same thing so what I do is I evaluate them, you know, a small pizzeria, you know, seven bucks, you know, let's call it for a lunch ticket for, you know, eating by yourself, 750 bucks, click to call, some menus, monthly maintenance, 40 bucks, no problem in the world. I had no pushback. I told them I'm going to custom develop the site. 
we maintain the software to comply with all the new phones that continually come out. And he goes, yeah, there's a new phone all the time, isn't there? And I said, oh yeah. And then I, and I always use the phrase minor updates. So um, you, can, you, can, you can tweak that how you want, but that's very real. So out of that $725 profit, uh, truthfully, it probably took about two hours to build the site. Done. Easy, easy stuff. I mean, this is just a real deal in Peachtree City, Georgia, where I live. Um, that's, that's all, you know, not, not much more to say. Use the same tool. I use the same tool you guys are using and uh, done. Um, now, let me take the question where somebody's, you know, also about the monthly fee. There are cases when you're going to want to build a site and you maybe you don't want a monthly fee. Maybe you can't you can't win the deal with a monthly fee. Unfortunately, I can't. We can't offer the product without having the fee to kind of stay in business, or else we'll do a half-ass job and it will do everybody a disservice. So there are times when you may say, "Hey, I need to build the site in WordPress." I I, I probably think that most people aren't going to go that route, but there are times when you may say, "I have to use a different platform," and that's okay because not one tool meets every need, and you just have to accept that. Never let anybody, us included, tell you that this is the only product you're going to use. You guys know I promoted Ken Santucci's product months ago, Fast Easy Mobile. Great product. So all in, it's an unlimited build mobile website product. It, 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 it targets a different kind of person and development effort, and you got to install it on the server and you know yada, yada, yada. But you know what? The product's great. And uh, he's a super guy, and I know they support it. So... Depending on your need, the client need, and you know the makeup of your business, you may do different things. So, any comments on this one, Jay? Yeah, well, and you, I, I agree 100% with everything you've said. Um, you know, businesses, most small businesses need pretty limited functionality in their mobile websites. You know, you're talking two to four pages, give them the basics, and they're more than happy. You know, then you know you can look at upgrading them into apps or into more a more sophisticated mobile site that, that has more functionality and does more things that kind of thing. So I agree with your comment that you know your solution, while it's a great one, is not necessarily always the one you want, um, depending on your technical skills and that kind of thing. Getting to your idea of the of the pricing, I concur that you know pricing on the fly has tremendous advantages. Some people aren't comfortable with that. And so, so first of all, one of the ways you can do it with pricing on the fly is just leave a blank in your order form or pricing guidelines where you literally write the price in as you're discussing it with somebody. Another, if, if you're not comfortable with pricing on the fly, and, and that can often be the case when things are new, you know, you, you don't want to kind of get to the pricing point and start kind of stammering because this is all sort of new to you and you're trying to calculate in your head and, you know, that, that kind of, uh, uh, that, that sort of lack of confidence will come across to your prospect. So one of the things I suggest people do is develop like four or five price sheets with different price points and have a folder and they're all in there. And when it comes time to deliver the price, you know, just flip through and pull out the one that you think is going to match up best with who you're talking to. So just a, you know, one little trick for how to sort of customize pricing to your client and, and, you know, based on verticals and that kind of thing. You know what? And I just saw a question while you were talking, I cheated and I looked at the questions. Um, D Wendell uh, had a comment that said, this is a great point And I never thought about it. Maybe I do it without knowing. It says, don't forget when you meet with the client to look at the quality of their menus. This is a restaurant, obviously to understand their taste level and budget. So very, very good point. Thanks for making that. Let's see. All right, we're going to move on to, I think it's SMS. Yes. Okay, so this is Jay's forte. So um, I'm going to be quiet. Jay, I put some comments up here. Why don't you talk about SMS? You can use what's here or, or, or delve you know, away from this, but I'll let you talk about SMS. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm reading your slide for the first time. So. Yeah, you guys, let me be honest. Um, I invited Jay to be a guest because I wanted to leverage his expertise. I didn't, um, I didn't say, hey, Jay, go make 26 slides and come and present to our group. I wanted to have him on the call, but I didn't want to be such an imposition that he had to dream up content and do a lot of work. I wanted to get as much value as I could from him without inconveniencing him. So thanks, Jay. Uh, you're welcome, and I'm glad to be here. 
Um, I, I mean, this is a this is a good slide. I, I, I think a hundred is too low. I would never. I, I don't want to sell anything for a hundred dollars. I don't want to get out of bed for a hundred dollars. So I might move that one up on your slide. Um, you know, selling SMS is about proving and and demonstrating the potential value. And there's um, two main ways that SMS can be used. One is to increase frequency of customer visits and the other is to get new customers. The, the uh, norm is more geared toward increasing the frequency of customer visits. So when SMS and mobiles first started being sold to, you know, mostly restaurants initially, um, and, and since then obviously the last, you know, many years has broadened out to many different kinds of businesses, the, you know, is the idea of, okay, put some table tents up, put some signs in and your existing customers can opt in and then just like an email marketing program, except these things actually get open and seen and act and more, most importantly, acted upon at a much higher rate than email. So that's sort of the model that SMS marketing um, started with. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with that model. It, it's, it's a good, and it's an easy, again, in terms of selling and positioning, that model's good because it's easy to understand and explain and you can, you know, make the sale without a lot of complexity, which is, you know, often one of the biggest issues people have is overcomplicating what they're trying to sell and confusing the business owner and they don't end up buying anything. So with the um, frequency model as a get SMS in the door, that's, you know, a, a great way to do it. The SMS appointment confirmation thing is a completely sort of separate uh, niche within selling SMS, one that I personally love, and I think you can charge much more money for appointment confirmations in, in most of the verticals where it really makes a difference. So I love that one. I, I could spend, you know, two hours talking just about that one, uh, uh, selling that one thing. Um, so at any rate, I think your, your, you know, sl your slide here is good. Um, if, it, you know, like we use um, some ROI calculators, and um, if you can walk through that with a business owner to show them the power of building a list and, and sending messages to it, um, that can also make the sales process relatively easy for SMS when they see that kind of numbers once they build a list. And um, so, it, you know, it, it can be a great thing. And then the last thing I'll, I'll just touch on, um, because I mentioned about getting new customers, that's something that a lot of people selling SMS don't even really think about. Um, but the idea of adding a text call to action to a business's existing advertising and marketing. So in other words, they're already spending the money to put the clipper uh, coupon in and the newspaper coupons and, and that kind of stuff. Well, add, you know, keep, keep doing that. You're spending that money anyway, but add a text call to action to that. And what that does is it opens up the business to an entire new subset of new customers. Um, the example that I always use is, you know, those kind of that kind of couponing is really dying. I mean, it's, it's a dying breed. You know, you, you think of your grandmother sitting at the kitchen table on Sunday clipping coupons out of the out of the papers. Well, you know, that whole model is going away, and now people want coupons on their phone. And so the, you can, you know, the SMS is a great way to attract a, a not only new customers, but a younger demographic, uh, the demographic that most businesses want as new customers. And um, so there's, there's lots of ways to, to employ it like that. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So um, I know I got, I don't know if I answered a single one of your questions. No, you did. You, you can... talked. I can ramble on for business. hours and hours about this subject. So. Well, we might hit you up for an SMS specific call because you can teach in, in an hour, hour and a half more than I think most of us, uh, you've forgotten more than a lot of us know. And I think it's a useful thing, you guys, but um, the hundred dollars wasn't mine. I don't do, I don't even, a uh, hundred dollars. You're right. I don't want to get out of bed for it either. That came from one of our members, um, Barack, who's in LA, bumped into a guy making SMS a total commodity I want to say it was $99 and then there was some fees beyond a certain amount of messages. So it was, I just laughed. I'm like, Barack, I don't even want to compete against that. I mean, one, uh, why do you want to 
you know, why do you want, there's too many other clients to go after, just walk away. Well, here's the last point, and, and that your story reminded me, is um, I always, always, always advocate SMS as a done-for-you service. I have literally seen hundreds of examples of businesses that start with SMS and give it up after a few months because it was left to them to figure out, implement, and run the platform. So I always advocate, get, give them a done for you service. You know, business owners, they don't, they don't want to learn about platforms and technology. They, they just want customers. Oh, enough said. And you guys, we're going to take your questions in a little bit. And Jay, whenever you see one, stop me, but I'm going to go to an example. I think there's two SMS examples. And you guys, these came from our existing Royal Mobile members. This one's not mine. I can't remember who sent this one in. Casual dining. Um, Mike Hart, I know you're on the call. This is Moe's. This is Five Guys. This is, uh, you know, those kind of places where you walk in, you get service. You're probably paying the better part of 10 bucks. It's a step up on fast food, right? doesn't usually mean that there's like a waiter, waiter or a waitress. It may have that, but not always. So this restaurant, I don't remember which one it was, was casual dining, $300 a month fee, built in some messages, and uh, additional messages were priced at four nine. Now remember the buy price in the US is 1.2, uh, very shortly to go to one cent. So um, I'll tell you guys right now, we're actually gonna release it, uh, the, dec the decrease in price to one penny. So very cool. Um, so with the cost model we, we have right now, to deliver this deal, you would have paid nineteen dollars, and that is yes. Did I not move the screen? Did oh, you not... I, yeah, you didn't. Okay, thanks. I just refreshed it. Yeah, I saw it. Thank you. That was my fault, y'all. So if you look at this, you'll see uh, nineteen dollars on the bottom where it says your costs. That assumes they used all the messages. And, you know, it doesn't take into account what, what you would call breakage. But nineteen dollars gives you two hundred eighty-one dollars of profit on that deal. So, uh, Jay, what do you do? Like, I, and I have to plead ignorance. Teach. What, what would you do with a small restaurant in terms of pricing? How do you package something up? I, I think you're about right here. I mean, I think that um, you know, again, if, if there are certain verticals where you can start at a lot more than 300, but for a smaller restaurant, I think this is just about right in terms of you know, 300 bucks a month. The number of messages here. Here's the here's a secret that none of the SMS platform companies will tell you. No one gets rich marking up messages. The way to make money with SMS is to build in packages, monthly fees like this. So if anything, I always advocate, get, you know, get, tell them they can have, you know, 10,000 messages. I mean, obviously you, you have to, you know, figure in, what would max out your cost so you don't lose money. But in most cases, especially when somebody's just starting with SMS, they have to build a list. So tell them they can have 10,000 10, messages the first month. They'll never use them. So, and again, I'm, I'm just, you know, there's more uh, detail to that answer that, that I can't provide today. But, um, you know, I, I think that your, your package here is just about right in terms of, you know, 300, five cents an, an additional message up, you know, beyond certain points and, and that build tiers in that kind of thing. Um, but you definitely want to base it on, uh, and, and when I, one of the things, um, when I say done for you, a lot of people will want to come in and say, well, it's this price if you do it and it's this price if it's done for you. And again, I advocate against that because you don't, you almost, you don't want a business owner, you know, saying, okay, well, I want to save the 150 a month and just, you know, get this and do it myself. Because in most cases, they'll fail. They don't know how to run an SMS platform. They don't know how to come up with their own campaigns and, you know, ideas for it. So, um, you know, I, I, I always think done for you with SMS is better. All right, and I got I see a I see a question here from uh, I think it was John that that is a very good one, um, w which is about um, uh, I'm trying to f uh, find it. Oh, it's about uh, the how often somebody should send a business and aren't people going to get sick of it and start unsubscribing if you're constantly sending them messages? Oh, it's a great one. Yeah. So the, the norm is once a week. I mean, that's sort of what, you know, the, the maximum that uh, most of these programs are built around. 
but and that is fine for a couple of months but sooner or later people are going to you know especially when the the offers if you're sending the same kind of offer repeatedly every week to the same customers eventually it gets old the, the response rate's going to drop and worst case they're going to opt out one of the critical things with SMS is that you can't just consider SMS as a platform to blast coupons and discounts at people ad infinitum. What you have to do is think of SMS as a way to engage the business of the customers. So you've got to figure in things like polls, quizzes, contests, um, you know, feedback interaction, that's the way to keep people on, on an SMS list and keep the response rates good on all the discounts and offers that you send out is the customer can't view it as, you know, start to view it as, you know, spam or, you know, oh, here's a oh, great, you know, here's, here's another, you know, 10% off message this week. I'm getting sick of these. So that, that's a critical point. Let's look at a second example. This is another real one. This was in Texas. And it was with a gym, like a health and fitness club. Uh, Jay, this is one of those, you know, mega gyms, if you will, with tons and tons of members where they actually count on the breakage of members not using the uh, service to, you know, make tons of profit. And they got, um, this was priced, God, I don't remember which, who this was, but it was $1,000. He, he, he kind of did what you said, 16,000 messages. Um, additional messages, the same cost. If, if you look, once again, it froze. We can't see the slide. Yeah, I, I saw it froze. I just re refreshed it. So if you look here, you guys, you'll see the 16,000 messages. I've talked about this one before because I love it. It's outside of restaurants. It was a little creative and outside of the box. And uh, very cool. Lots of things you can promote with SMS in a gym. Zumba classes, personal coaching, smoothies, uh, bring a friend, um, holiday hours. You know, there's tons of stuff to reach out about. Um, but very, very high profit. Um, Jay, your thoughts on this one? Yeah, well, uh, first on your, uh, I want to say something about your comment because gyms are a perfect example of the breakage model. And that's a pricing model that's used in a lot of different kinds of businesses. And that's the exact model that I encourage you to use in pricing your SMS campaigns. You know, it's like the all you can eat buffet at the restaurant. You know, they realize that 90% of the people they're going to make money on, they might lose money on 10%, but they, it's fine. They don't care about that. So when you price your SMS campaigns, the same kind of thing, think about, you know, you know, price it, hopefully, so you don't lose money if they max it out. But here, you know, in this case, if, if, it, if my messages cost 224, um, you know, I might include more messages. It, it depends on the business, but, um, you know, again, I, I mean, I think this pricing is applicable. If you've got 8,000 members and you're sending them offers, it looks like in this case twice a month, your ROI is easily going to justify a $1,000 a month fee if, if you're crafting the messages effectively and getting good response. All right, excellent. Um, guys, we're going to do questions at the end. If you can stay, great. If you can't, you can uh, make fun of Brian because the call is too long. So. Um, we've, we're shifting screens. Let me know, Jay, can you see it on mobile apps? Yep. By chance? Got it. Yep. Okay. This one has um, a lot of interest. So mobile apps for local businesses. Um, I, I put a few examples, restaurants, uh, churches, obviously gyms, again, retail, real estate, bars, bars and nightclubs is, is really big. But what really fires people up is, is two things. One the, the sizzle or cachet, if you will, of apps in the media and in society right now with smartphones, whether it's an iPhone or a Droid, and two, the fact that you can get big chunks of change right now. You can get a lot of money out of selling these things. So that's what has people so fired up. Um, how do you sell them? I, I've done it a few times right now, and Mike, uh, if I could bring Mike Hart on the call, I would just to let him comment on this. He's a friend of mine who's selling a lot of apps right now with a small sales team you know, you sell it with ego, the client with ego or the expensive restaurant or the personal injury attorney. It, it's almost like a, a vanity item they have to have. I personally don't think the market for apps is as big as it is for SMS or mobile website, but the value and the money, the money is, is so big that it's hard to ignore it. 
And then also you have that fear of being left behind. So many people are like, oh, I don't understand it. I know I need one. I need to go mobile. Everybody keeps hearing mobile, mobile, mobile. And when somebody comes in and Mike, who's on the call, he does the walk-in method. He builds a little skeleton of their app and he walks in and shows it on the previewer. He's like, hey, do you got a minute? You know, it goes in after launch, 2, 2.30. He shows them the app and they're like, holy cow, that's my menu. You know, that's my business. And they love it. And the, their own ego and fear of being left behind sells it. Mike will tell you, he doesn't like to sell. He likes to do a little technology and he likes the business aspect. But this kind of stuff sells itself, the coolness, the wow factor. But let's get beyond that. What do you do with them? You create these apps for these businesses. It's, it's very similar to SMS. It's not about finding new clients like a mobile website would be. It's more about driving more money and, you know, uh, connecting with your clients, in, in, in improving your, you know, your ROI, filling your, your tables on a slow night. You got push notifications. You got a lot of cool whiz bang features, but you're going to build a relationship in, in this way. And you're going to use push notifications very similar to what Jay talks about with SMS. So Jay, let me comment, let you comment on apps and maybe take the, uh, the contrary position about the fact that not everybody needs an app. I can do that, um, but I can't do that without first, and this is going to sound like I'm in the, uh, the leading member of the Brian Anderson fan club, but once again, I agree with you 100%. Well, I don't have one, but if you want to start <laughs> one, <laughs> I would be really cool. <laughs> I agree with everything you've said. Um, I think that you know mobile websites can do you know, I don't know what the percentage is, but 75% you know, or 80% of, of what a mobile app can do. I think that most businesses don't quote unquote need a mobile app. There are some very cool things like push notifications that you can do with apps that, that make them unique and, and for the right kinds of businesses can, can, uh, can really be a hit. Totally agree with your ego and, and fear thing here. Um, in my experience, most of the people who bring up apps are people, you know, with large egos. And it's just this idea of, yeah, I've got my own mobile app for my business. Um, you know, that's cool. Uh, so what I would suggest, like, like if I'm, uh, I, I, was it Mike you were talking about? That yeah, Mike, Mike's yeah. down in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Well, my guess, and I don't, I don't, well, I'd love to hear from Mike, but um, my guess is that he's not cold calling and walking into every business. If I were doing what he's doing, I would look at businesses. You can tell what businesses have egos just based on their marketing, their advertising, their signage, their, you know, their appearance. And I would focus on those businesses. And I, again, I wouldn't necessarily even then lead with an app, but I might ask some questions up front where, again, there's certain kinds. I, I mean, I love his, his um, method, which is if you're going to lead with an app, you know, don't sell it. Just walk in and have it on and hand it to them um, and say, yeah, check this out. See, you know, and if, if it lights them up, then I wouldn't talk about SMS or sites or anything else. I, I would sell the mobile app to build the relationship. You know, somebody else just commented, it was uh, D. Wendell again, commented and said it really increases the share of the wallet with existing customers. So, um, Wendell, if you don't mind sharing where you're located, I think it'd be interesting to get your framework from what market you're in, whether you're U.S. or uh, – uh, Europe or even Australia, you know, we have a good mix on this call, you guys. So um, I I agree. I'm learning as I'm doing right now. I will tell you that Rob Actis and I started building uh, mobile apps, not for local, but for, quote, unquote, uh, for profit, for ads and, you know, little little at, little apps back in January and local, local after that, but dabbled with local for a while because, I, like a lot of you, I struggled with the value prop for many local businesses. And the truth is, I needed to get over myself. I mean, that's the honest answer. If if some guy wants to pay me 3000 bucks for an app, who the hell am I to tell him no? What am I going to do? Tell him no, go buy from Mike? Sorry, Mike. <laughs> you know, I'm going to sell that guy that uh, that app and deliver it and make the money and then make the monthly. I mean, it's it's very interesting. I mean, you you have to stop thinking that you know everything and you know what's right for them. And if someone's convinced that's what they want, I'm not going to, I'm only going to, I'm only going to try to dissuade them to something else one time. I'm not going to beat them up to, 
not selling the app, which is kind of what I had done for a while because I felt like the value wasn't there. So uh, let me go to the next slide. And I had made some comments here, you guys. Um, and these are by no means the only reasons. I just came up with a few and brainstormed with some people on a Skype chat the other day. You know, really, why an app for local? Staying current, right? It's an easy way to connect um, with typically a high disposable income. You know, high, uh, they spend a lot of money, whether frivolously or not. The people with the smartphones have um, a high conspicuous consumption. They like to spend money on stuff. Um, build relationships. You know, this is, you know, obviously, right? You can take your customers, you're on their phone. And as we all know, we've done these polls on these calls. How many of you guys have your cell phone next to you? If I had made one more poll, I think we would have found out two or three feet away at most. And uh, Jay, what do you think about this one? This is, to me, one of the more interesting ones. The push notification one, that number three, it's very similar to SMS. Yeah, I, I think that the, the thing about apps, I mean, if you look at the statistics for business apps, typically the usage drops off the chart after 30 days. And it's that same coolness factor that we were talking about a minute ago. Okay, you find out a business has an app. It's cool. I like the business. Okay, I'll get their app. And you might play with it you know, or, or use it in the first week or so and then you forget about it you know i mean i don't know about you but my iphone is loaded with apps that i've never used you know more than a week after i downloaded them uh, me too me too yeah so i mean unless you're a game you know the app usage for businesses you, you can find stats on this it drops off but the difference is if you can build engagement into the app and that's really where an app jumps ahead of the pack so you know, you can't do a push notification based on location with SMS. You, know, you can only do that with an app. So businesses that are going to, you know, rely heavily on that or businesses that are in like tourist areas, that kind of thing um, can, can, you know, value greatly. And then other, you know, the other sort of app things you can do to build in customer engagement. So you give them a reason to come back to the app that's where it's really going to, you know, do these things you're talking about where, where it um, just steps up the customer's engagement and commitment to the business. You know, here's a question from Cameron and he asks uh, either way, he said vice versa. Uh, if you sell an app, have you lost an SMS customer or vice versa? I have to say, Jay, my opinion is no, because a lot of times that's two different, two different audiences. But what do you think on that? Yeah, I agree. I think that you haven't uh, lost them. You know, obviously every business has a, a different, um, you know, point at which they, they can't buy everything at once. You know, they've got to buy something, justify the ROI, then they might, you know, then you can upsell them to the next thing, justify the ROI, et cetera. And that's being a true local marketer and consultant. Um, but I, yeah, I, I don't think it's their uh, exclusive. Uh, I think you can, you know, there, there are situations where even if you have an app, you still want a mobile website. Excellent. Okay. So um, I made a comment at the bottom. It's all about building better relationships and, and entertainment for sure. I mean, I'll tell you yesterday, my son was in the office and he, uh, he said, Hey dad, can I use your phone? I forgot my eye touch. And I'm like, all right, that really means he's going to download 10 new dumb apps on my phone and put them in a folder. Hopefully uh, but probably not. And then he plays around with them every blue moon. But yeah, I mean, I don't sit around and play. I use the same four or five apps, like a little words with, when I need Jeff Klein to kick my ass at words with friend, I'll play with that. Or if I want to play any of like two or three other games I may play, that's it. I mean, that is it. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I think that the push notification to me is the, is the big one, but here's an example on the next page. Um, and I'd love for all of you that are selling apps today, um, go ahead and put in some pricing that you're doing and things that you're selling. So Mike or Patty or people out there that are selling apps, give me some prices on how, you char how you're charging right now. We'll share them out, you guys. So one-time fee, 1,500 bucks for the iPhone. But hey, Mr. Customer, not only will I give you an iPhone, but I'll give you an Android and an iPad version for only 2500 and then 50 bucks a month for my software maintenance. 
custom app development. And you know what? This one has so much sizzle and um, price. Usually you don't get beat up on price. I've only had a few really good sales cycles and I will admit that most of them were with clients I already knew, uh, just being honest on this call. But I will tell you that if I try to ch charge any of my existing clients several thousand dollars for something, I better, I better have something they want or they're going to beat me out of the, you know, get out of here. <laughs> so there's money to be made. Um, if you look at that in terms of profit, you're talking a lot of money in, and I would say that the time to build a mobile app isn't much longer than to build a mobile website. It's a little bit longer, but not a lot. The real issue comes in, you can get the, uh, um, you can get your Android app up immediately, but you gotta wait around on the uh, Apple approval process. So that, that adds a couple weeks. So you gotta build those kind of things in, but if you look at it, you can make a very hefty living pumping out apps. and Somebody told me the other day, he's in a medium size, upper, upper middle size city in Florida. I think he said there was 4,000 restaurants in his town alone. 4,000 restaurants, that's a hell of a lot of restaurants. We're not even talking about any other niche. So um, anyway, let's, uh, let's get some comments on this. Uh, Jay, or if you see any good questions, do, is there something we should, be, uh, we should be showing here? Do you guys see well, good let me no, but, but let me, uh, so I'll challenge you a little bit on, on your pricing on this slide a little bit. And um, anytime I do anything that I'm marketing, I, I always try to immediately put myself in the shoes of the business owner and, you know, try to pick it apart. Yep. So if I'm the business owner and you present this to me, and again, it depends on the business. I mean, some businesses are, are used to paying you know thousands of dollars for things and hundreds of dollars per hour for things whereas you know if, if I'm a, a restaurant you know I'm gonna look at that and go well that monthly maintenance fee what do I really get for that that's just all you know that's bullshit that's like you know yep. that's all oh, I agree so I'm I, gonna say, the first thing I'm gonna say like is, okay okay that's negotiable <laughs> yep. you know and if, and believe me that's exactly how I'd approach you if you walked in and tried to sell me because I, I know these tricks. <laughs> so, and then the other thing I'd be is, okay, minor updates and major updates. Okay, so the skeptic in me, and again, I'm trying to talk as like the business owner who's always skeptical in the sales process, is going to say, oh, okay, so that's where he gets me. <laughs> All right, everything that I think minor, he's going to call major, and then it's 125 bucks an hour. So to me, there's gray areas there. And I, you know, would again go back to something like build in some tiers, you know, say they get, you know, so many updates for this price a month, so many more updates for that price a month. If there is such a thing as a major update that you need to define in, um, uh, in, the, in the app process or whatever, then that, I think you could, you know, that, that you could sort of asterisk and say, you know, well, this, if you want this particular kind of thing, then it's an extra charge. But the, to me, minor, major, or vague, and, and I... Yep. You know, no, no, fair enough. No, I, I, I synthesized it down to fit on the slide, but I would agree. If, it, if all I wrote was the word minor, major, I would be asking to get my ass handed to me in a, <laughs> in a discussion. But no, like, for instance, if you said, hey, why don't you add on the ability to do this cool new feature, you know, order online, that's, a, you know, major, maybe, you know, right. or maybe you want to... If you want me to change the name of this word on this page, that's nothing. You, want, you know what I mean? And, and you can right. define those. But let's talk about the, the real one that you said that you kind of hit on, I think, was the – where is it at? You talked about the maintenance fee. So it, it's pretty real. Like having sold software, and I get it. Local businesses aren't used to buying things that actually take work to keep up. But there's a real cost – to maintaining an iPhone app or Android app because those jokers at Google and Apple change the bloody platform all the time. How many times do you get an update to your iOS or your, your, your ice cream sandwich or your Froyo, your newest version of, uh, of your Android system? They change all the time and you have to be able to adapt and keep up with it. So truthfully, it's the cost. It's just a monthly, it, it's a fee to maintain the platform because they don't own the app forever. You're building, you're really selling them an app with a licensing fee for use. And if they quit paying you, their app goes away, which is good and bad. They may say that sucks. 
And you may say, I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish it didn't. But the truth is, if you built an app from scratch without using a tool like we're talking about, you're, you're, you're potentially quadruple, quintuple these numbers to do the actual development work. So you have to, you have to pay to maintain the software, but they're not going to understand that. What you have to tell them is mobile changes almost daily. There's new devices and coming out, but in the case of apps, the iOS and Android updates are constant and we have to maintain all of our apps. We may have to make them compatible with the future versions. And in little things like that, people get the velocity, you know, how fast these things change. And you're right, they are going to push back a little bit on that. And maybe you come off five or 10 bucks and you say, look, this is my floor. And either they want an app or they don't. Um, it's, uh, other people on the call who have been selling apps, give us your feedback on this point, real world situations preferably, just so we know and we can read them out loud. Um, did anybody, Jay, did anybody put in any kind of pricing that they that they go with? Um, I'll, I haven't been looking, so I'll, I'll check. But I, So I, I agree with what you just said, and, and with apps, it's probably an easier uh, argument. And, and again, I'm, I'm assuming you wouldn't just put monthly maintenance uh, on your price sheet. You might put a sentence under that that says, you know, covers all updates, you know, that are being driven by you know, Apple and Android, or, you know, you'd, we'd put something there that, you know, makes it, oh, okay, I, now I, I okay, I, I'm not going to challenge that because it makes sense. Um, so I think that's, a, and it's, I think that's a uh, easier argument with apps than it is for mobile sites. I think so too. I think the apps has that, it has that appeal, and it really is true that there's a true development effort. Apps is a software, is a piece of software, whereas a mobile website is so very front end. And so, you know, very, you know, too many people know cousins and nephews and 10 year olds that build mobile sites. Right. Right. Or, excuse me, they build websites. And so, to the, in their mind, website has a lower perceived value, whether that's true or not. Yeah. I see somebody, uh, Danny, sold uh, an app for 2500 and 500 for a mobile website. Okay. You know, I think that's, that's, you know, right on target in terms of pricing. I saw somebody else earlier suggest that. You sell an app for twenty five hundred. One of the things you could do to seal the deal is throw in the, a simple mobile site as part of the deal. So you know if if you got them close and they're on the edge, say I'll tell you what, you you take the app, I'll throw in a three page mobile site for you as part of the deal. Yeah, here's another one uh, I see. Here's some more feedback. Where was eight hundred dollars? This is Mike. Mike. Um, Mike Remmer, uh, Mike said eight hundred dollars plus ninety nine a month and an extra ninety nine a month for food ordering feature. So he tied a specific high value feature to a higher payment. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah, it's good. Let's see. I'm looking. Um, no, that's yeah. Here, oh, this is Mike Hart. Okay, this is the Mike I was talking about who was local to me and then moved to South Florida. But he said. We include up to six push messages a month at $50 a month and then additional per message to discourage them from abusing customers. So that's, that's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, guys, like there's that. a lot of way to slice it. You can slice it a lot of different ways. Uh, Michael is addressing two things there, which are both critical. One is he's playing breakage because he's saying we'll include up to six push messages a month for 50 when in fact a lot of his customers may only end up doing three. Um, plus, he's preventing abuse you know, of the customers with that kind of a level and, and having an ups, upcharge, um, you know, for for any kind of additional. So that's a good model. Okay. Well, guys, um, that is the last slide. I can move it to the Q and A slide, but we want to take a few questions. And let's see what we have. We can answer some of these. Maybe we take 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll wrap it up. But I, I hope it was a good call so far today, and we kind of hit a lot of high-level positioning and kind of um, framing and reference, you know, kind of kind of discussions. We're going to do a lot of pricing. Pricing is obviously a hot one, and, and we got the message on the sales side, the sales strategy side. So we'll have some things coming that will address that. But uh, – We'll take a few messages, a uh, few questions, and see what happens. So, I just opened it up to. Um, here's one. Well, I think 
Can I uh, just yeah, go ahead? Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, talk uh, now that we sort of cover all the different aspects. Now it comes back to okay, so which do I start with, and you know, what do I know what to sell? And the analogy that I always use is that you you can't sell what you want to sell. You need you need to try to sell what the business can benefit the most from. And that's a huge, uh, you know, uh, once you get that one concept, it'll make a huge difference, especially when you've got multiple tools in your belt that you can provide to a business owner. So the analogy I like to use is, you know, if, if you sell uh, migraine medication and you walk in to meet with your business owner, you know, how you doing today? And, and, he, and right at the beginning of the, of the conversation, he says, yeah, I'm doing all right. I, my migraines, you know, kind of bad. Well, immediately you know, you're like, awesome. <laughs> Oh, this is great. I sell migraine medication and you launch into your pitch and you, you know, you, you get on your soapbox and you talk for 20 straight minutes and at the, you know, meet the entire time thinking about how you're going to spend his check. He's about to write you and you get to the end and you, you ask for the close and the business owner says, you know what? I could really use your migraine medication, but I'll tell you what, my knee is hurting so bad today. I can't even feel my headache until I can fix my knee you know, I'm not ready for, I don't care about the migraine. And as silly as that example sounds, that's a perfect example of what, you know, what prevents a lot of salespeople from making a sale is that they're more interested in selling what they want to sell as opposed to what the business owner not only needs, you know, long-term, but needs at that moment. And that's where you've got to ask questions up front when you start talking to them that might guide you to which of these services and, and that kind of thing to sell. So I hope that makes sense. No, well, absolutely. I, I, yeah, I couldn't agree more on that one. Um, what about this one, Jay? Um, let's, the questions from Eric, um, would you, would you bring a, a demo of a mobile app or a mobile website in for the client to see, or even a, a sample SMS campaign? Let's keep it kind of generic. Absolutely. Yeah. Show and tell is always, you know, a great way for people to grasp, especially technology that they may not understand. So rather than try to explain it, you know, to be able to just show it is an awesome strategy, including having uh, absolutely have SMS keyword demo samples set up um, and you can walk in and, and, you know, say Texas keyword to this number or, or even do it on your own phone and show them exactly what comes back so that they get the experience. Hey, Brian. Leanne, hey. Hey. Um, regarding the app and showing the apps, um, I had, there's there's a uh, an app that people can download, and there's a website also. I don't know if you want me to take a quick second. Yeah, go, go ahead and share it out. That'd be great. Alrighty. Um, so basically, if you have an iPhone, the app is called Preview Your App. So just go into the app store and look for the preview your app app <laughs> and then download it. And I can show, well, I can't, I don't have the screen. So, or I can I make you a presenter. You want, would you mind showing it? Oh no, I'd love to. Yeah. Hang on a sec. Let's make you a presenter. I, I think it'd be useful to see. I think people like that. Um, all right, Leanne, you are now the presenter when you're ready to share and they will see the, uh, that app. I think you said you have a web-based version of it or something, right? Well, there's both. I mean, I have it on my iPhone, but I obviously can't show that here. But we can go to the website, which is the same technology. So the same way you'd plug these codes into your iPhone app, you'd use um, it, it, it. The website is exactly the same. Okay. I can't show it because my computer is like little pokey here. Okay, and... Is that iPhone only, the preview, or is that Android 2, John Guild in Colorado asks? It's... This mimics an iPhone, but the app will look basically the same on the um, Android. So do you see my screen right now? Yep, we see it. All right. So this is previewyourapp.com, and basically, like I said, the Apple app is called Preview Your App. So what you're going to do is you have you get these app codes, which I'm going to be uploading into the training area. And for example, you just click on that. And as soon as this loads up, 
I love this because it also lets you like show see the features, which is really cool. It's not just like an image of it. So I've got a code, and you have to use the, the keyboard here. Okay, it's kind of a pain because I keep wanting to use my computer keyboard. And I'm gonna, this is a restaurant. So once you same thing on the iPhone, you're just going to put the code here where it says email. Then you're going to hit next. Then you're going to hit go, and it's going to load, and away you go. Now, I think this is slick. See here? They've got these slider images here, header here. This is the app. And then you can slide here. And if you actually wanted to look at um, like the tip calculator, that's it. And it, it would actually work. So you can actually show on your phone or on the computer. You can actually, and we did this demo the other day, remember, Brian? Uh, I remember this one, yep. So we, you know, $100, let's say we I don't know do what, it. was it you that was tipping 45%? You were scaring me. You scared me. <laughs> All right, that. we'll do 20%, okay? Yeah, 40. Yeah. You, must, you must be a waitress, too, because 40% is painful. Hey, I used to own a food business. I'd love to. That's right. All right. <laughs> All right. Number of people will say four. She's, op she's obviously making a lot of money selling mobile. So here you go. She can tip 45%. I love, yeah, right? Um, but, you know. I just wanted to show an extreme example, but this one is not so extreme, but it still shows that it works, all right? And it's so very nice. See the background on this? That's what you're looking for to an app, and I won't get too into detail. I just wanted to show that it works, so if you're in a customer's environment, you can show them, hey, you know, that's the tip calculator, this is the, you know, QR coupon, which obviously wouldn't work, the image gallery, nice pictures, and look how they show, you know? What business owner doesn't want to see that? That looks nice. I'd eat there. Yeah, that looks good. <laughs> so basically, um, now, let's say you've got, I've got like 10 or so codes. So let's say you want to put another one in. You just refresh the page. And in your iPhone, you have to go into the little app tray on the bottom, shut the app, and open it again. It's just, it's the only way yeah. you can get the app open again. But now it's refreshed. It's ready. If you want to add another code, you just Yeah, put, it, put another one in just to do, do a different example. Do you have something that's not a restaurant? I uh, do. Let's do, you want a realtor or a lawyer? You pick it. A uh, realtor, or, actually. We get a lot of realtor questions. We get a golf course. Wow. Let's do realtor. So let's do pinnacle demo. No, you know what? Let's do L-I-N-D-S-E-Y-R-E. -E. I don't know what that is, but I think that's cool. <laughs> Some Somebody's weird code. Must be Lindsay something, right? I think so. Yeah, I thought the same thing when I saw that. And we're going, we're going, here we go. But I love this, being able to show this. And again, if you're not close to your customer, you can just have them load up this site and you be on the phone with them and you can go through it. So, you know, it gives you, um, gives you a lot of options. I forgot what it is. Lindsay, oh, it's Lindsay Real Estate. Okay, yeah, Lindsay R-E. Yeah, okay. L I. N D S E Y R E. I haven't even looked at this one yet, so. Well, there you go. Deborah Lindsay. All right. All right. Listings. You know what? Everybody wants to see the most common question I see on real estate is listings. Can you show us that? There you go. Uh, we don't know where she's at. I wonder. Wonder if we could just see them. Wow, so that's just sucking right in out of the MLS so somebody can do a search. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and that's basically a, I believe it's a website tab. So you just put the URL of a website, and it just pulls in. I wonder, I guess you could just put a zip code of a city and find a home. Yeah, it's just pulling from MLS for her. And she's got mortgage calculator, which, hey, look at that. It's just like the tip calculator. But what they do for that, you can lock this percentage. And realtors do it so that people don't plug in, you know, like 2% and then get surprised, like, hey, why is my mortgage higher? Um, and this is a good example of what you need to include in an app, too, because, like, you know, you really don't need this stuff, but Apple likes to see you use the native functionality of the phone, so that's why you use this stuff. So that's why she put Notepad. Yeah, that, that's actually a great point. We didn't bring it up. I mean, we were going to save stuff like that. But you guys, that take this away right now. doesn't matter how or where or when you build Apple. 
you know, iPhone apps, you have to use some of the native functionality and your images have to be kind of slick or what happens is they, they tend to try to deny and ask you to redo the app a little bit. Yeah, so that's why you see she's using this creatively. So when you're creating an app, get creative. Like think of the camera. So let's say you had a dentist. Um, well, let's go with an auto repair place because it's more obvious. So it's an auto repair place or a car dealer and they do um, car repairs. So you would say, well, take a picture of your whatever, ding, you know, bumper that got smashed in and send it over to us. Okay, so just be thinking, how can I use the native iPhone functionalities with this business? Or for dentists, I don't know, if you crack a tooth, take a picture of your tooth and send it over, you know? I mean, maybe that's kind of gross, but... Leanne, you know what that reminds me of, it, just with that little record of memo thing and, and send it in, is, I, I don't know, um, anybody ever listen to Click and Clack, that radio show about cars? Car yeah. Yes. Car and talk. one of the Are one of kidding? the funniest things about that is, is when people will call in and try to describe a noise that their car is making. Well, there you go. Just use that thing you just had there, and they can actually record the noise and, and email it to the uh, car dealer. There you go. Yeah, D Doug Cameron, you're on the phone. Uh, I know Doug's out there. Doug has an auto garage client in Virginia. That's a cool idea to include with the app. <laughs> Record the sound of your vehicle, the knocking noise of the CV joints or something like that. Right. Um, anyway, a cool, cool feature. That's a good idea, Jay. Yeah, so that's, I mean, I don't want to take up the call going in depth. No, that's okay. But... No, but it was a good share, and I think you guys get the idea of how to use it and why you would use it. Um, Let's grab a few more questions, and we'll leave this up so you can see it. But uh, what do you see? Um, examples. So John Rogers says, do you guys by chance have any examples we could use? Leanne, do you want to answer that? Yeah, I'm going to be putting these. You saw that my doc with all those um, demo sites. I'm going to be posting these in the members area. So there's like all these on the bottom and these up top. You can just, hey, take a screenshot of them now. <laughs> Plug them into preview or your app. But I'll be putting them up in the members area later. Nope, super, you guys. Um, let's see, Jay, um, do you see anything else? I'm looking for kind of cool yeah, questions. I, did, you guys, I, I can't saw... take them all. There's a lot of them, so. Yeah, I, I shoot, I found a good one, too, and now I can't find it. I lost it. <laughs> oh, you know what, Jay, this is for you. It's from Gonti, and he usually has really good questions. SMS is well-suited for a business that hits the same customer multiple times with the same or different offers. How do you use SMS? You know, he then says he goes away from that. How do you use it in a business like a health insurance agency, maybe serving a national customer base? Um, and they, they get a customer once, but then they don't really communicate with them all the time. How would you use SMS in, in that kind of role, whether it's a national or a local, like as an insurance agency? Any thoughts on that? A um, couple ideas. One is um, it's a perfect opportunity to upsell other products that, the insurance agency has. So if they're a health insurance client, you know, every couple of months send them something about, you know, something about life insurance or home insurance or flood insurance or whatever else they offer. The other is, and there's, you know, plenty of documented um, cases and studies uh, that have been done where just providing information is a, is a way to engage customers and will increase their, um, you know, buying with the business. For instance, you, know, you see a lot of this with um, health uh, insurance providers, not agents, although they could do this too, where you're just sending out information about maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Um, it, or um, you see it with like cessation programs, like smoking and, um, and, and drinking and that kind of stuff, where they'll send like a daily tip uh, about, you know, reminding you <laughs> not not to grab the, uh, the, the, you know, the, and eat the whole bag of chips. Um, those kind of uh, programs have shown uh, demonstrable results uh, using SMS. And um, so, it's, there, you know, it's a way to engage customers and educate them as well. I got a, another SMS question from Jim. Now, Jim is um, Definitely on the on the savvy side, he's been doing this a while. He's got an established business, SEO and mobile as well. Um, talk about how you inter Jay, talk about how you introduce SMS to a new or prospective client. Do you go in there as a salesman or do you go in there as a customer and then just sort of by the way? Um, 
what's what's a way that you do and there may be there may be more than one way but it, what's what's one way you would highlight well uh, you know, this will sound cute, but I frankly wouldn't Gwyn as either. I, I would Gwyn as a local marketing consultant and fellow business owner, not as a salesperson. And there are real distinctions to that. Um, obviously, if you are a salesperson, you can't do that if, if you're working for one of you guys. If, you know, if you have somebody working for you, they can't go in and pretend they're a local business owner. But um, they can they can certainly still position themselves as a local marketing consultant. So, yeah, I, I don't, you know, I mean, obviously, if you're in a restaurant and the manager walks by and you're there as a customer, sure, why not? But, um, no, I, I go in as, you know, uh, representing the fact that I have uh, uh, an array, and this is where you need a great elevator pitch um, and unique selling proposition, but I go in and um, I'm somebody who can help them uh, get more customers increase revenue and increase profits through a variety of using a variety of different marketing technologies and what I'd like to do is talk to them to see if I can help them. All right, perfect. Um, samples of the apps, I think Amadi, we, we did a few of those. Those will be in the membership area. Um, all right, here's a question. This is more um, administrative than, than positioning and strategy, but how do I get set up so I can have multiple website and web app demos to show clients? So Hugh, you can uh, you can hit add a new website all day long. Even if you're only paying for two or three, you can add new ones until you're blue in the face, and they're good for 14 days as a trial. And then they go and they write at the end of that, it'll write the word expired across the top and become a nuisance to you. But you can add a hundred of them right now if you want. So that's the answer to that. If you want to make multiple app demos, Leanne is for people that have used all their app credits. You know. We, we'll set you up a couple more, anybody that needs them. The, we'll be honest with you, it's manual and it takes us a little bit of time to set them up. So I promise we're super cool, but if everybody on this call asks for five, Leanne will hate you and me <laughs> um, because it'd be a hell of a lot of work. Um, so if you need them and you've used the ones you have, there's no cost to get more to build samples um, because you can do unlimited demos. Just file a support request and we'll make you a couple more. Um, no worries, and it typically takes, just because of the barrage of stuff uh, with the launch, it'll take anywhere from an hour to two days, and just build that into the time, you know, for, for what you need. Um, but it's a good question, and one that we'll, we'll delve more into on the unlimited usage, because you can absolutely um, build, you know, a couple apps that are demo only, and then show them to clients. That's a, a great way to sell them. And then on the same token, Jeff in Boca says, Jeff, how do you, or Brian, how do you handle feature requests that are beyond what is available with the system? So let's say on the mobile website side, and, and I know Jeff owns a mobile design or you know, website design company um, as well as SEO. And Jeff says, hey, Brian, I want these three features in the website platform. I, once a month, well, that's probably not true, twice a month, we've been, we're prioritizing features and then figuring out which ones make sense to build in. So Jeff is obviously a good person to take input from because he's, you know, he's very, very experienced in that area. So I'll say, all right, look at this. I've got seven people asking me for this feature. I'll build it in. So that's, that's the example. Um, but we will build in features. If you guys dream up something cool, by no means do Mario and I and the engineering guys we have know everything. We know what we think we know, and it's a great jumping off point. But there are other things, uh, other things to do. And when you guys come up with them within reason, we will do our best to uh, oblige. Um, hence, that helps the little fee, helps pay for all that kinds of stuff with the development team. Um, what else? All right, three more questions, you guys, and we'll wrap it up. Jay, let's find three good ones, you guys. Um, Gonti, your question for Jay, I'll reserve that for another time. And... Um, I'll let Jay write you back privately on that, but I don't want to publicly do that right now. Jay can write you back privately on that one. So um, where else? I'm going to find some good ones. And Jay, Gonti's question was at the three. I got it. Thanks. 28. Okay. And um, I am looking, you guys, for some good ones. 
And some of them, like Jason, I want to take your question, but I want to save that for a call just about on the mobile website side. So I'm not ignoring it on a custom landing page. Um, no, you don't have to submit the apps to the app on Android store to see them on the preview capability. Leanne, am I wrong there? I think that's true, right? I'm like 99.999% certain that's true. Um, Can you just Oh, Leanne, the question is for Leanne, are the demo apps, so when we create a demo app, I'm going to build one right now, and tomorrow I'm going to go drink beer at this place and show the uh, head bartender, right? Um, so when you do that, does it have to be submitted to Google Play or the Apple Store first or no? Oh, gosh, no. Um, what are you going to do? That would be a worse than death, so no. Yeah, no, 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 no. Don't, don't do because you haven't even sold it yet, so definitely don't do that. Um, definitely just use the site previewyourapp.com, or, hey, let's say you're just so low tech, you don't have an iPhone, you don't have an iPad, you don't have an Android, you got nothing, you don't even, they don't have Wi-Fi, so bringing your computer wouldn't help. Take um, screenshot, you know, screen capture the app, screen capture the features, so like go to the mortgage calculator page, screenshot that, print them out. I would just go down to Kinko's or, you know, what is Staples or whatever you have near you, get some color you know, um, prints made of those pictures, put them in those clear uh, sleeves and put them in a notebook. Worst case scenario, you can walk in with that and say, hey, this is an app that I created for you and you can flip through the book. That's like the lowest tech and you could still get the job done. You know, of course, if you have a phone, you want to just download the preview of your app app and walk in and show the person it live. That's got the biggest wow factor. You know what? Um this is a question from Jason about a chiropractor app. Not sure what to build. And I'm getting a lot of those. Hey, I'm not really sure what to build. So the best way to do this, Leanne, if you or Jay want to comment on kind of cool things that would be in a chiropractor app, I'll let you. But we should really do a whole call, which is the plan, on this and kind of go into cool things to include that would span multiple businesses. Anything offhand you could think about, Leanne, that you would want to include? Not to put you on the spot. Yeah, no, but chiropractor question. I bet it's a good one, though. It's a good one, and if you think, what does so chiropractor is all about health and natural health and stuff like that? So, they might have um, they might have an RSS feed in there from a site on from their own blog, maybe that lists healthy sites. Um, you could have food related recipes. You could have people like I don't know, take pictures of. Well, I don't know if taking pictures would really help for a chiropractor. Is that, you could have is that, that helping? You could have that record a message thing, listen to this creak in my neck. And <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what we can do? We have like three members of Mobile uh, BizBox and Offline Renegades that are chiropractors. I will ask them because it's a good question. Lynn, oh, that's an interesting one. Lynn comments, chiropractor could use um, a back exercise video from YouTube. So that's a good idea. Um, online booking, if it's on the website, Leanne, could Jason integrate the online booking into the app? Yeah, if look it's at on, it, Jason, I, I think, what do you think, Leanne? I think you can, because you can pull in any website, and if that feature is on the website, like she's pulling in listings from MLS, right, and it's using that page from MLS, so as long as that feature is integrated in, the, in that web page, I'm pretty sure you can bring it in and just pull it in and it'll display in the app. Now I'm I'm 98% sure that it'll absolutely work. But that would work and also, oh gosh, okay, push notifications. So you could use the app to send out healthy messages like, hey, it's, you know, national, take care of your back week and, you know, here's some great tips on how to have better back health. And um, like you said, either a YouTube video or just some tips on stretching and stuff like that. So again, he's not really marketing, but he's getting his name out there in a good way to stay in touch with his um, clients, customers. Brian, I think the, the key question there, and, and I would love for you to ask your three chiropractors is what, what you, and this is perfect to set up another call just on the apps. And um, the key question is what can you do with an app for a chiropractor that you can't do with a mobile website or SMS? 
because most of the ideas I've heard so far, you can easily do with mobile websites and SMS. But I'm sure there are some cool things you can do with an app. Nothing comes to my mind immediately, but um, you know that that's where it really gets. You know, that's what adds value or adds extra value to the app and, and makes it even um, sexier. Um, but and the one thing I'd clarify, and actually I'm glad this came up because I saw this question earlier is um, somebody asked, what is a push notification? And I, you, w with an app, when you hear the term push notification, you're generally talking about a geolocation aspect. So it's going to identify where you are physically. And if you're within a you know, certain radius of the business, it's going to you know, generate some kind of a, a notice or offer. Um, you know, because you can quote unquote push you know, any kind of offer notification message update with, you know, a basic SMS uh, campaign or, or put stuff on your website. Um, so that's just a little bit of a clarification. You know what, and Jay, you guys, we're going to wrap it up in a second, but I got a question I want to end. Uh, I see a good one for you, Jay. I'll answer the first part and then defer to you. So Craig asked, um, do you guys see any conflict of interest in working with competitive clients? Now, in my, on my opinion, I see no conflict on website or app. What about, what do you guys think about that? And then Jay, I'm gonna throw SMS over to you. I don't see any conflict. I, I you know, it, <laughs> we're in a capitalist society. <laughs> Like, yeah, I mean, SMS, I mean, if you, what do you mean, only one restaurant and then the city of yeah. Chicago? I mean, that'd be tough. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's a reason to limit yourself uh, and your ability to sell in that kind of way. I think, you know, I understand the positioning, but I think that uh, you're, you know, better off, um, you know, not uh, limiting yourself. All right, and let's see. Um... Jay, I got Paul Chamberlain asked a couple of good questions I saw at the beginning of the call and I forgot to ask these. Um, are companies inundated right now with calls from people hitting them up for SMS? I think that um, from you know the hundreds of people that I've coached and get feedback from, um, I think you still find things all over the spectrum you walk into places and they're like, I've never even heard of this. And you walk into places and they're, you know, yeah, I got three calls, you know, about that or two people, two salespeople walked in last week. I, I literally don't think we're at a saturation point with any of this stuff, e even mobile websites that, you know, you can sort of know when, when you are prospecting or, or walking in and, and places, whether, you know, people are getting inundated or whether, you know, they, it's the first day I've heard of it. And we're going to do, he, he also asked about pricing and you guys, we're going to do another, the, the thing you reference, uh, Paul is good, but we're going to do another pricing call with, uh, Jay and Mario. And I think we're going to, we're going to really knock it out of the park on it. I have some ideas on it, but, uh, let us schedule that and, and we'll, we'll keep it a hundred percent pricing and strategy, which was a hot button based on the feedback early on, but it was, it's a good question. I'll let Leanne, if you look at Paul's questions from 225, um, there's a couple other ones we can take offline for him. Um, anything else, Jay, let's, if you see one more, we'll do it. Otherwise we're going to wrap it up. Do you see anything else we need to hit? Uh, you know what? I, I, it's hard because there's so many questions. It's hard to pull <laughs> things out to focus on. So, um, no, I don't see anything that I, it, it jumps out immediately. All right, and for all you beating me up because I didn't make we didn't make an offer with Jay's coaching product, you guys we'll we'll definitely promote Jay's coaching product in the future because one we like it, it it's good the quality is there and I'm not gonna let Jay talk about this he doesn't I'm not gonna put him on the spot but the reason we want Jay on some calls with us is we respect him his content is 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 top notch and we do intend on promoting it it's just we're not gonna promote it today right now we're trying to promote. And, and help make you guys successful with Mobile BizBox and doing some high level stuff and we're gonna drill down. And at some point, many of you may say, hey, yeah, I'd like to see more about what Jay does. And we'll, we'll share that, we'll get him on the call and we'll, 
we'll grill him in a friendly manner and we'll ask him about his software maintenance and you know we'll beat him up <laughs> no teasing no we'll, but we love it and we couldn't be jay just so you know everybody's extremely happy and thankful that you spent the time on the call with everybody today and a lot of positive feedback from patty and a few other ones here so uh great hey, i'm glad to be else? here i you know as i said earlier i, I like the I mean, you can just tell by the questions that are being asked um, you know, I love working with people who are, are serious about this stuff and engaged and, and are you know, really trying to make it work. Yeah, and Brad, absolutely. Uh, I completely agree. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit him up in advance next time. Um, Brad said, hey, let's get a lot of Jay's ideas on the slides. And Jay, I intentionally didn't want to, I didn't want to press you about that kind of stuff. So I didn't, that's why I didn't go there. But maybe on the pricing, we can get your help on the pricing call and putting some good content on the slides. But uh, everybody, yeah, thank you. And Jim with the, the great call and everybody else, Jeff Klein and others here, we really appreciate it. Toby, uh, Patty, Gonti, Hugh. Um, we have the UK with uh, Sean Daniel. We a lot of people here, um, lots of lots of people on this call. And it, it actually picked up as the call went on, which is unusual. Um, I will end that Barry Warren's question, do all apps have to be approved? Yes. Do all apps get approved on the Android store? Like 99%. Do all apps get approved on the Apple Store? No. And we'll, we'll work with you and help you on that. So with that being said, it's an awesome day. It's Friday. And I have uh, all these in-laws and family in for the weekend. So I may have to dream up like a Saturday webinar in the middle of the day and then a Sunday afternoon webinar. <laughs> but anyway, in all seriousness, thank you guys for spending the time. And we look forward to uh, chatting again. If you're not in the Facebook group, get in the Facebook group. It's happening. There's good content, good discussions. And uh, people in the Facebook group will be the first ones to learn about the mobile conference. You don't even know about it yet, but you're hearing about it because you're, you're still here at the very end. So join the Facebook group if you need any help. Leanne, can you, as parting words, tell them how to get in the Facebook group? I Archie. can't. I keep muting myself. Um, it's okay. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. And just we'll go in the member up. area. Okay. Go in the member area, and there's a form that Jason was kind enough to put in there, and it, it's right at the top menu bar. It says Facebook group sign up. Just put your info in that form. It'll send me an email. I will friend you. I will send you a friend request because you know we got to play by Facebook's rules. So we got to be connected on Facebook. Once we're connected, I can get you into the group, and it's all good. Yeah, and Jim, since you're already my friend, I'll add you in two seconds, and you'll be in the group. So. With that being said, thank you, everybody. I appreciate all your time, and we will have the recording up shortly. And I know that Doug also was kind enough to record. So, Leanne, if we have any problems, um, we can reach out to Doug for help. But thanks, everybody, and we'll talk to you soon. And, Patty, that's a super secret. Nobody even knows that I mentioned that today. But uh, we want to talk to you about that since it involves uh, Chi Town. But anyway, talk to you soon. Bye. The organizer has ended the session, and this call.